it is a great problem to have when you have multiple trials that are positive with monotherapy as well as chemo and a couple of different chemo regimens, a couple of different immunotherapies. And I think it will be left largely to the uh, judgment of the treating physician and the uh, preferences of the patient, the, what they will favor. I think that uh, the pembrolizumab is in a good situation of having now data for monotherapy in a broad population of about two-thirds. Uh, I think we'll likely be seeing an approval that will make that a broader option as first-line treatment for the patients without a driver mutation. And uh, we'll have uh, carbo uh, and pemetrexid with pembrolizumab, perhaps also with cysts, but I don't think that's going to be a particularly attractive choice in the U.S. And we already have carbo pem pembro based on the uh, Keynote 21G trial. And now, in squamous, we will have uh, Keynote 407, which is positive for uh, not just overall, not just uh, response rate, but progression-free and overall survival, and that's with Carbo and Nabpaclitaxel combined with uh, Pembrolizumab. We also have the Empower 131 trial, which is positive for progression-free survival using the same uh, Carbo and uh, Nabpaclitaxel backbone with uh, Atezolizumab. However, I don't think that the Atezo combination is going to be as favored uh, because we don't have overall survival difference there. We only have PFS and I would be inclined to favor the option that has a significant improvement in overall survival. And the fact that there are so many positive trials now I think only gives us more confidence that, uh, that you're not going to go wrong by choosing you know, Pembro and it's just a question of do you give it alone or in combination with chemo. And I think we're largely consolidating toward an idea that it's uh, if it's non-squamous, a platinum pemetrexid combination is attractive. If it's squamous, platinum and nabpaclitaxel is strong. We'll get some other data as well. Uh, and, and maybe we will evolve to or go back to where we were 10 years ago where you could use whatever doublet you want and get essentially comparable results and you just kind of pick your favorite based on ease of use and the, the toxicity profile and the frequency of treatment. But I think that's kind of where we're going. I would just prioritize those that deliver an overall survival benefit ahead of the ones that only uh, deliver a PFS benefit.